so up until this point, we've been talking about bonding. And the force of a bond is very, very strong. And now I'm going to start talking in this video about forces that are between two molecules that are next to one another. So instead of what we are called intramolecular forces or forces inside of a atom or a compound, now we're talking about intermolecular forces, so the forces between you know, two water molecules that are next to one another. And there are three kinds. There's dispersion forces, dipole interactions, and hydrogen bonding. And they all are very weak compared to the force of a bond. Um, but in terms of each other, dispersion forces are the weakest, and then hydrogen bonds are the strongest. Now the first two dispersion forces and dipole interactions are also called uh, van der Waals forces. So I'm just going to go in detail about the, these three um, intermolecular forces. So the first one is a dispersion force. So essentially what happens is if you bring two atoms close to one another, their electron clouds are going to repel one another. So if I bring this helium atom over close to this one, the uh, or the like charges are going to repel, and the electrons of this guy are going to kind of move over to one side. As this happens, then the nucleus is left sort of exposed, and it starts to attract the negative electrons of the atom next to it. So the clouds end up looking like this. You can see that the electrons are pushed. Electron cloud is being repelled over here, leaving the nucleus kind of over here to the right with a positive charge, and therefore creates a little bit of an attraction to the electron cloud of the atom next to it. So you can see for a moment and for, um, you have a very weak polarity. So you have a little negative side here and a little positive side here and a little negative side here and a positive side here. And so they're attracted to each other. But again, remember this is a very weak attraction. Now, right here it says the motion of electrons increases as the number of electrons increases. So as we go down the halogen group, what that means is as we go down the halogen groups, whoop, you actually add more and more electrons. So the more this cloud is going to move, and therefore the stronger the interaction is going to be. And that's why at the top of the halogens, fluorine is a gas, and chlorine is a gas. But as you get to bromine, the electron cloud moving creates a little bit stronger interaction, so it sort of mobilizes or immobilizes the molecules, making them liquid. And then iodine is actually a solid at room temperature. So the, the states of matter of the halogens is because of this weak di dispersion force interaction. Now, a dipole interaction is when we have a polar molecule, so something that's got a positive and negative end. Remember that this is a very temporary weak polarity, but these this is a permanent polarity. So we've looked at how to identify whether or not a molecule is polar based on its Lewis structure and its the symmetry of the electrons. And so when you have two polar molecules next to each other, they're going to interact and they're going to be attracted to one another. So the positive end of one polar molecule will be attracted to the negative end of a, of a polar mole molecule next to it. And so that is a dipole interaction. And that's a little bit more, that's a little bit stronger than a dispersion force. And then finally, we have hydrogen bonding. In hydrogen bonding, occurs when you have a hydrogen bonded to nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, or chlorine. So here's an example of a hydrogen bond. This is water. And essentially what happens is remember that hydrogen only has one electron. So when it shares its electron over here with oxygen, then the nucleus of the hydrogen is what we say is unshielded or it's exposed. So the polarity in a, a, where a hydrogen is bonded to an oxygen, nitrogen, fluorine, or chlorine then is a very strong polarity and therefore you have a very positive unexposed nucleus over here without any electrons in the way. And therefore this uh, attraction between the negative side of one water molecule and the positive side of another water molecule is very, very strong um, compared relative to the other two intermolecular forces. So in the next video, I'm actually going to talk specifically about water and why hydrogen bonding is so important in the properties of water and, you know, apply it to some 
common things in our environment um, and apply it to other sciences.